morning, everybody. So uh, this is Jerry Scott and FDO FDOT in Tallahassee. Today, we are going to provide CSIP grant management application training. So this is where the seaports will be submitting their grant applications for the current cycle, which opened yesterday, May 1st. Uh, the cycle will close on June 17th. So uh, we thought a training would be perfect for any new users and anybody that needs a, a refresher. So B2G Now is here to provide a training on their software. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Hi, this is uh, Becky Maynardi with B2G Now. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Um, Jerry, can you see the CSIP screen now? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so um, like Jerry mentioned, we are recording this. Um, we have everybody muted just since there's so many folks um, in the attendee list. But if you have a question, feel free to go ahead and type it into the question chat. Um, and I will stop periodically to make sure we get all your questions addressed. And then we can kind of open it up at the end um, as well. If there's if there's anything that we missed, you know, feel free to, to go ahead and get those questions and, and we'll try to make sure we get um, <clears throat> you all squared away here. So um, this will be kind of a refresher for some folks and, and we'll kind of start at the beginning though for anybody who might be new. Um, what I'm sharing with you guys right now is actually the production side of CSIP. Um, and so <clears throat> the dashboard when you log in has um, some good information that Jerry's provided here, right? That includes, you know, the, the cycle that uh, DOT is collecting FSET applications for right now is for fiscal year 25, 26, right? Um, the deadline for those applications and funding requests to be submitted is Monday, June 17th. Um, so you'll have a reference to that here as well on the dashboard. Um, and he's also provided some information about, you know, changes in scope, fiscal years, um, project costs, master plan consistency, and contact information um, for the FSTED folks and DOT folks should you guys have any questions. Um, now, the important part on the dashboard, particularly for, for where we, for, you know, kind of what you guys are working on now for the application cycle is this project request section here. Um, so you're going to want to, you know, kind of come back and forth here. Um, these are going to filter to your 20, uh, 2025, 26 projects for FSTED. And then also if you have any DOT or uh, strategic intermodal system requests, those will come in here. Um, but you're really focusing on FSTED uh, and that FSTED deadline at this point. It also includes the deadlines here and you can see a summary of the requests that you've submitted. So for example, um, you know, when, when you uh, expand this, you're gonna see a list of projects. So here's one you know, for Canaveral Port Authority, North Cargo Berth for a request for 20, uh, 25, 26. So this, um, when you get to the end, should include in this FSED section, all of the projects that you are submitting for FSED consideration. Um, so the dashboard is kind of nice to keep going, you know, kind of back and forth to to make sure that once you get to the end, this includes your five, ten projects, whatever it is that you're submitting, um, and make, making sure they're in the right status. Um, so I will walk you through how to actually create a new project if you need to, and then also how to request additional funding on an existing project um, that may have already been, you know, submitted to FSTED in a previous year. Uh, that you want them to reconsider. So maybe it got reviewed but didn't get funded last year and you want to, to resubmit that, okay? So I'm just gonna switch over to our test site uh, right now. Um, so I'm not messing up with uh, any of your data, so don't get uh, worried about that. Um, so most of what you guys are gonna be doing is here on the projects tab. Now the projects tab defaults to um, all the open projects. So these are all the projects that have actually been through the application cycle and have been approved or are actually under, under grant. And um, so that's the default. But you can change here at the top to in development, which will show you anything that's kind of in some kind of process where you've uh, created a request or, um, or started an application. Okay, so there's filters up here at the top for you to kind of narrow down um, you know, by status, the project list here. I'm gonna go ahead and start one from scratch. So if you have a new project that you want to add 
uh, into the system to request $25-$26, you're going to select add new project up here at the top. It is going to default to your port. Um, I'm, I'm logged in as a state user, so I'm actually having to pick it, but it's actually going to default to your port. You're next going to select your project type. And so the choices here are things like, you know, birth capacity projects, cargo equipment, environmental, um, intermodal containers, dredging. So you're going to pick from the project type list, uh, the project type that best suits the, the kind of project that you're working on. Uh, you're going to enter in a project name. So maybe it's birth construction, you know, wharf A or, or whatever it might be. Um, you're going to describe, you know, in the project name, kind of generally what you're you're doing with this project. If it's a phased project, the DOT would also like to see that. So that's just a checkbox and you can check that on or off if you're going to be kind of have this project phased out over multiple years or um, or maybe it's not and you leave it unchecked and it's just all at once. You're going to enter in the total estimated cost of the project. So we'll just put a million dollars on this one. And then also the amount of state funds that you're requesting for the project. So maybe the DOT, you're requesting 90% from the DOT. Um, and so you're going to put the total cost overall and then also the amount of state requested dollars for the total project here. Next, you're going to enter in the estimated year of completion for this project. So I'll just <clears throat> go with 2031 for this one. And then the estimated life of the project in years. So maybe uh, it's going to take you a couple of years to build. So you're going to include that as well. You want to enter in your port priority. And, <clears throat> you know, within this year, you, you want to have kind of these in order, right? So maybe you have five projects. You want to have one, two, three, four, five. Just to give DOT and uh, the Ports Council folks a little more information so they kind of know the priority order of the projects from your perspective um, that you want them to consider. You can also enter in a port identifier. Um, so this is not required, but if you have like an identifier in your master plan uh, for where this project might be or something, right, you can put in that port identifier. This is really just for you all at the port. Um, if there's anything, you know, kind of that you have that reconciles back to your master plan or something like that, that helps you identify this project, that's what this field is for, for you all. Then you're going to select the project's location. So we actually have uh, a map and it will zoom into your specific port um, and you want to kind of set your project location for where that project is on uh, at your port. So like... Uh, generally, you know, we're working on Terminal D, maybe at Port of Miami, right? So you might, you know, um, select that area and then set your project location. And that will automatically give the latitude and longitude here for that area that you selected on the map. And then last, you want to put a description of the project. So maybe we're constructing a uh, new birth um, on east side of port or, you know, uh, whatever additional information you can provide here to give a description so that the again the DOT and the Ports Council folks know uh, what you guys are including in this project. So once you enter in that basic project information then we're going to select create and that will give us all that information up here at the top as a reference. Okay if you've made a mistake or you need to change something, you can view or edit that project again. So it'll open it right back up for you and you can uh, update anything that you might have missed. Um, you can also delete this project. So before it gets to the point where, you know, anybody at the DOT or Ports Council side has looked at it, you can delete this. Maybe you've entered this project by mistake. Uh, you'll still have delete as an option. You can also put project notes. So if there's anything additional that you want the DOT to know, you know, about this project, uh, you can add notes uh, here and post a new one. Um, you can select a category for those. So maybe you just want to put some general notes in so they're aware of that. Again, this part is completely optional, right? So the project notes are available um, if you want to add anything additional. So everything up here at the top, um, is kind of the summary of the project information that we just entered. And then it's going to add our tabs down here below. 
Uh, right now for the application cycle, all we're focusing on is funding request. Some of these other tabs across the top here, these come into play if the project actually gets funded and we get into doing things like invoicing and contracts and that kind of stuff. So at the beginning, we're just working on the general information at the top and then also the funding request. So your next step is gonna be to create a funding request. Um, you wanna identify the source. So this is gonna determine what application you're going to fill out. Um, if it's a DOT only project, you know, maybe you're doing intermodal or something like that. There's actually uh, no application that goes along with that. Uh, there's no, um, there's so there's nothing additional fill out you're just going to be putting in dollars but since we're focusing on fsted today that's what we're going to go ahead and select here so the fsted application is pretty extensive um, for those of you guys who haven't been through this before there's a lot of questions that go along with that so you want to make sure that you're selecting fsted application because that goes through a multi-agency review uh, with the ports council and then also the dot um, and other state agencies reviewing it from the planning and economic perspectives. You're gonna next select your phase type. So for the most part, what you guys are doing uh, is phase 94 when it comes to the port projects. You're requesting a grant for a capital project. Um, so whether that's, you know, a birth, whatever it might be, a construction project, um, you're gonna select 94 uh, for that. Generally, these other ones are more as uh, if DOT were doing this or if, um, you know, the, there's different phases for construction and thing on, uh, things on their side. So 94 is what you want to select here. Then you're going to put in your preferred execution date. Um, so this is, you know, kind of when, if you were to receive funding on this project, when is it that you might be expecting to, to receive the grant and be ready to begin work on it? So since we're dealing with 25, 26, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick, maybe we're ready for this in January of 26, um, and then describe the work that's going to be done. So uh, it could be you have multiple phases on this project. Maybe you wanna request just the design money in 25, 26, and then you're gonna request additional construction money in 26, 27. Um, so this part is meant to be to describe the work that's gonna be done in this phase. Um, so we're going to say maybe design of construction for birth, uh, new birth, uh, whatever additional information you can, can provide here is helpful, helpful to the reviewers so they know what uh, work you're going to be actually completing in this phase of the project to complete this overall birth uh, construction project. All of these four fields are required. So you're gonna see there's a little asterisk next to these. So the system is gonna force you to do all of those before it'll let you insert this funding request. Okay, oops, sorry. Okay, so now once we've inserted that, that's our request information. You see it gives us additional tabs over here for funding application and history. Uh, so if you need to edit anything that you just entered, you can always go back to request information and update that. But next, what it's going to ask you to do is actually add the funding request. So how much money is it that you're actually looking to ask for from DOT? So when we select add funding request, we want to pick our fiscal year. So again, remember, we are focusing on 25, 26 uh, for FSTED and the application cycle that's currently going on. So you're going to select that fiscal year enter in the dollars, uh, and all, again, all these require, are required. So maybe you're not asking for any federal money, uh, but you are asking for state money, and you wanna also show your local match. And then maybe you have uh, another other sources, you can identify that like maybe a bond or something like that. And you can also identify the matching source. So maybe it's port revenue is what you're using to provide the local match, okay? So again, all these are required. You're gonna wanna make sure you pick fiscal year 25, 26, and then enter in the dollar amounts that you're requesting of each of these different types for federal, state, local, and other, and also identify your matching fund source. Once you've entered those, you're gonna select insert. Okay, now uh, it is gonna show our request here. Again, you can select that and edit it if you need to. You can also delete this if you make a mistake and add a new one. 
um, but your funding request information will be available here on the funding tab. Next, you need to fill out your application. Okay, so our application, um, what you see on this tab is determined by, you know, what we picked originally for which uh, type of project or type of application we're, we're requesting to submit right now. So again, remember that was FSTED when we selected it in our initial request. And so that's why it's giving us these additional tabs here across the top um, for all the information that we have to fill out for an FSTED application. Now, one of the things that you want to uh, keep in mind before you start filling out your application is what we've done is we've given you a link to your library documents um, because there's a lot of things that you submit with an FSTED application that are kind of repetitive, right? So they're asking, for example, for like your master plan. Um, you might also have like a project map, things like that. So I'll go to the, uh, once we finish submitting an application, I'll show you where the library is. But um, you have the ability to link library documents here. So if you go down to the bottom, uh, you'll see all the documents that are actually already available in your port library. So for example, you might wanna link the, the master plan to this project um, so that you can um, you don't have to can continue to kind of re-upload that master plan, for example, because um, that's actually tied to some of the questions in here. So you can repeat that, you know, and link as many different documents as you might need. Um, I think the, the map is one of them, right? So there's one of the things that the DOT folks ask you to include is a map of where the location of the project is. So at the bottom here, you can link to any of the main library documents. You can also mm -hmm. upload documents here um, in the project document section. So if there's something project specific you wanna add, you can choose uh, a file, um, you know, any kind of document and uh, name that and upload it here and just attach project documents here as well. So two ways to tie uh, documents to this project. You can upload them directly here or you can link to documents that may already exist in the library so you don't have to continue to repeat that on every single project. Um, our certification is really the last thing that we're going to kind of check off here. That's just making sure that we are signing off on this project application, basically. Um, but the, the FSET application is broken down into four parts. So we have our general tab, uh, our planning tab, our economic tab, and our transportation tab. The general tab uh, has quite a few questions, and this section is going to be reviewed by the planning, economic, and transportation folks. Um, they're all using this tab when they're doing their reviews. Um, so first, you know, they're asking for a detailed description of the project. So this is where you would be entering your description information. You're also going to indicate the type of project. Is this an access project, a capacity project, an efficiency project? So we'll select capacity since we said we were doing a, a birth uh, <clears throat> project. Um, and then also describe how the project will, will help you um, meet that seaport capacity objective there. Next, you're going to identify if the project is consistent with the Seaport mission plan uh, that's available on the Ports Council website. And then if it is, you're describing which goals and objectives this project is helping meet for that overall Seaport mission plan. Uh, on the next question, you're going to identify your estimated dates for starting design and permitting. Um, so you're, you're kind of when you estimate, you're gonna start those and complete them. And then also your estimated construction start date. So you're just gonna go ahead and pick all these dates and uh, estimate when you believe the project will be completed as well. And then how also does this project support the plan for economic development, the Florida Strategic Plan for Economic Development and achieving the port's economic goals for question 1.5. And then last is provide a map that identifies the project location. So this is where that link document uh, comes into play, right? You can just go ahead and select that and it'll give you all the, the documents that you have either linked at the bottom or uploaded on the project itself. And you can go ahead and check that off. So we'll go ahead and link our map to that question here. And you can see that documents available on this one as well. 
Okay, so general section, uh, just some basic questions about how the project helps with kind of the overall state system and mission plans and strategic plans. Um, and then next we move on to our planning questions. So is this project in the current uh, air, uh, port master plan? And then again, we need to link to the master plan here. So this one, uh, usually we wanna make sure that's in the library and you're gonna go ahead and link to the master plan and update that. And then explain uh, how it's consistent. Next, is it consistent with the five-year schedule of capital improvements? And if so, you wanna to link to your CIP here. So we'll go ahead and link to our documents on each of these. And then you can also explain if it's not included. Are there any port-related amendments um, related to the, to the comprehensive plan? And is this project included in any other regional, state, or local plans, right? So all these questions are required. And so you're gonna wanna fill those out here. Now there's a save button at the bottom, um, which you can save after kind of each section if you want to. You can come in and out of this, right? So when you're in this, you know, kind of stage where it hasn't been submitted yet, this is gonna remain editable. And if you get interrupted, you have to go to a meeting, you gotta ask somebody else about question 2.2 or something, right? You can just continue to save this as you're working and you can come in and out and finish updating this. It doesn't have to all be done at once. Okay. Next are your economic questions. So your total capital investment, uh, federal, state, and local again here. So go ahead and update these. And then if there's any private or local investment, you wanna include that as well. Um, sources of the existing funding. So again, things like FSTED, Port Revenue, SIS, whatever it might be, um, you can enter that in the comments. The useful life of the project, the anticipated annual maintenance costs, and then how you determine what the maintenance costs were, the met methodology for that. Then also cost breakdown. So how much of that million dollars, for example, is for permitting, uh, land acquisition. And again, this could be zero, right? If there's nothing related to it, maybe there's no equipment, but the rest is construction. Uh, and any private public partnership costs that are included here. And that'll just automatically total for you. <clears throat> if there is a public-private partnership, you just wanna explain that here as well. Uh, the in-state economic impact of the project and the total impact, and then also again, the methodology for that. And then job creation. So how many direct jobs would this project create, maybe it's zero, you know, maybe you're just doing a, you know, a maintenance project or something like that, may or not. So you, you're gonna update those uh, numbers here for direct, indirect, and construction. And then also the annualized uh, average wages. And again, methodology. And then does your port have operating revenues of $5 million or, or less? Um, so yes or no to this one. And then if you say yes, it's gonna ask you to put in an explanation for that. So again, you just wanna kind of periodically save um, as you're working on this, but that's our economic section here that you'll need to fill out for the FSTED questions. And then last are your transportation questions. So <clears throat> from the transportation review, what they're gonna be looking at are answers to these questions. So uh, is there increased cargo and cruise volumes uh, that it, you use to help kind of determine the benefits of this project? And if so, you're gonna enter that information for TUs, vehicles, dry bulk tons, liquid bulk tons, brake bulk tons. So that is the additional volume that you anticipate being able to handle for cargo based on doing this project. Uh, if it's related to improvement for like the, the cruise passengers, maybe it's a new terminal or something, again, you're gonna be entering those numbers here for revenue passengers, ship calls, and share of multi-day cruises. And then 
Uh, again, a, a lot of these questions are for you to add your methodology explanation uh, here. And then how long after the completion of this project will it take to fully realize those increased volumes? Maybe it's five years. Huh? You're going to answer that question. And then next is our transportation impact. So does this project have any impact on um, the transportation network? So short distance truck, long distance truck, rail and barge vessel is the breakdown. And again, the methodology. And then the travel efficiency impact. So if this project impacts access to the port, you're gonna enter that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave a couple of these blank just so I can show you that these are required. Uh, so. so again, you're gonna save. And remember, we just need to check off that certification at the end that you're certifying that everything that you've entered in on this application is correct. And you're gonna go ahead and select save. Okay, so I'm gonna stop for questions for a second. Does anybody have any questions about what you're you know, filling out for the application or how to, to, to enter this so far for creating a new project? Okay. No um, so questions in the chat yet. Okay, great. Thanks, Annette. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to submit this request by selecting this button here. And you see, remember, I left a few of those questions blank at the end. If you try to submit and you haven't entered any of the required questions, it's going to give you this error message and tell you where you've missed something, right? So I've missed my questions on the transportation tab. So the system is going to prevent me from actually submitting this. I'm going to go back to our transportation tab and you see now it's highlighted with a red asterisk, the ones that I've missed. So you want to make sure, um, you know, you're filling these out. And if you do miss something, the system will warn you before it lets you go ahead and submit the, this funding request. So now we've corrected our, our problems here. We've answered all the questions and I'm going to go ahead and submit this request. Now, again, you do have the option to delete up to this point. So if you uh, have decided, oh, I changed my mind completely, we're not going to do this, you can delete this um, here. Once you submit, that will no longer be, you'll, you'll no longer be able to delete, right? So um, that's, that's where this delete will disappear. So we'll go ahead and submit our funding request. Okay, and now it's turned everything into read only, right? So now our request information, our funding, and our application are all submitted. And um, you can print this if you want, or you can export it into a Word. So you can have a hard copy version if you'd like to. Um, but once you submit, that's when everything kind of turns over and you'll no longer be able to edit it. I'm just going to go back to the dashboard. Um, so now you can see, right? How, how in our FSED request, we now have that new Wharf A project, that birth construction Wharf A that we just added. And you'll see that here. You can access it from, from the dashboard. So you can either select the project name or you can select the funding request and that'll take you right back into the project. Okay. So the, again, the dashboard's kind of nice because that'll just make sure you're kind of on the same page of all the projects that you've submitted for that particular fiscal year. Okay, so that is how to handle it if you are submitting an entirely new project. Um, if you have a project that already exists, and so I already, <clears throat> I just kind of set one up for us here, you can select that project from your project list and you'll see kind of the history on it, right? So this one I, I just put in and I said, okay, this one went through an application in fiscal year 23, 24. When it is in approved unfunded status, that means that it went through the whole application cycle, uh, but did not get funding, right? So it got reviewed by the economic planning and transportation folks, um, and it's been approved, but they, but it turns out in the end that didn't shake out to actually receive any funding. If it's in approved unfunded status, you can actually select the request from last year. 
and you will see that there's an option for you to resubmit this funding request. So say it went through 23, 24, I did not get any money. I want to just resubmit this completely. So DOT will reconsider it in 25, 26. I can select resubmit fund requests. It's gonna give me a warning saying, you know, if you choose to resubmit this, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna retire the 23, 24 one. So you still have reference to it, right? We know that it got submitted but it's then gonna give you a new, um, a new one for the 25, 26, so you can go ahead and update that. So we'll just say continue here, so it's giving us a warning. And it's gonna ask us, why are we resubmitting this? <clears throat> so you may have no changes, which is fine, right? You just want them to flat out reconsider it. You might wanna resubmit it for 25, 26, but there's additional scope that you're including or additional costs. So you're just gonna check off, you know, whatever applies here. And then we're also going to go ahead and select 25, 26, because that's the year that we are resubmitting it for. So we wanna resubmit this fund request due to a change in scope and costs, and we want them to reconsider it in 25, 26, and then we'll just select continue. Okay, so what, what it's done for us now is it's given us a complete copy of what we had from 23, 24, but now we can actually edit it. So you may wanna add some scope here to the description. Um, it's gonna let us update our funding, right? So we said we're resubmitting it due to an increase in cost. So you can update this and actually update the, select that and update the dollars. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, all the same screens as when you were adding a new one, it's just we're updating a copy of what was previously submitted so that DOT and uh, the Ports Council can reconsider this. So we can update our funding amounts there, and we can also update our application questions. So maybe we increase the costs and we need to make sure that we are updating the economic information uh, you know, to match what we increase on the cost. So you're gonna be able to edit everything that is in your, uh, your, your kind of copied version of what was submitted previously. So all the same exact screens, just, I'm resubmitting it and um, it, get, it basically gives you everything to start with. And so you're just editing uh, what you were tired from the previous year. So once you've done that again, you're just gonna go ahead and submit your requests. So that's your second option. First, you can either create a brand new project, <clears throat> project that's not in CSIP that you want them to consider, or you can resubmit on a project that did not receive any funding. Um, if it's in approved unfunded status, you'll have that resubmit option and you can follow those steps that we just did. And so it's just starting with it and you can edit everything. Now you'll see kind of what happened on our funding request tab is it retired that 23, 24, funding request from last year. So we can still go back and reference it, but it's created us a new one for 25, 26 with any tweaks that we might've made to that. So DOT will now see this one in their queue to review. Um, so that's the steps that you'll wanna follow if you are doing a project, you know, you just want them to actually reconsider a project that's already been uh, reviewed and that, that would be anything that's in approved unfunded status, okay? So again, this project's on my dashboard because uh, I've, I've submitted a funding request, an additional funding request for 2526 on that project. Okay. Any questions on approved unfunded projects? There's no questions yet. Okay. Okay, so our last option is we might have a project that actually did receive funding, right? So maybe we have funds planned on a project um, and we really just wanna ask for more money, right? Like we got, we actually did go through the whole process last year, we got money, DOT gave us dollars for that and, and we just wanna add another phase to it or we wanna request additional dollars. So you, you can select that project again and create a funding request. Again, we wanna make sure we're picking Fsted here and what phase 94, when we prefer for that to be executed and we're describing the work for this new phase that we wanna to add to the project or this additional money that we wanna request. 
We're going to add our funding request just like we did when it was brand new. So 25, 26. And our dollar amounts that we're requesting from all the different sources. And we're going to select insert. And then on the application tab, you'll see now I have an option to copy my pre-existing application. So instead of making you start all over again, you can select that and say you want to use an existing application or you can just leave it blank, right? But we're, we're going to go ahead and say we want to copy that. And when we submit that, it's going to give us our application tab, but with everything filled out from the last time we submitted an FSTED application on this project. So you don't have to start all over again. You can start with a copy uh, if you're just adding a phase to it or adding a request for additional dollars. And then again, just like you would when, when it was already approved, you can update whatever you might need to. You're going to save that, and then you can go ahead and submit that request as well. Okay. Okay, so three options for your projects. Brand new, and we're going to select add new on the projects tab. If it's approved unfunded, we can actually just resubmit that and it will retire the old one and update it. So that's something that was reviewed but did not get funding. If it has, if you're just requesting additional dollars, that's your option three, right? So a project that's already received dollars, <clears throat> you want to request additional phases or additional money, you can just create a new funding request and copy your existing application. Use that copy functionality so that <clears throat> you don't have to start from scratch and do everything again on that application step. Okay. Okay, so again, just a reminder, make sure you're using your dashboard, right? Because this is gonna be where you're gonna see all the projects that you actually have tagged to 25, 26, and um, you know, what's kind of ready to be uh, reviewed by DOT. I'm just gonna go ahead and <clears throat> swap over to a, the port view here. Um, so, when you're when you guys are looking at this from your view, I was looking at the statewide one, but you'll see that it's actually going to show you the status too, right? So as you're working on these, these will be not submitted. Um, so at the end, you know, when you're done with everything, this is what you want to reference to make sure it includes. Okay, it has all five projects that I wanted, and all of them are actually in submitted status by that June deadline. Okay. As the Ports Council and DOT folks start reviewing, <laughs> this dashboard page will actually be uh, updating. You know, it'll start showing us, okay, the planning review is complete, the economic, the transportation. So as they do the reviews, these statuses will, will continue to update. Um, but this section here is, is what you want to reference to make sure you have all your projects in and they're all in submitted status by the time you get to that deadline. Okay, any questions? Jerry, is there anything that you guys want to add from the DOT perspective, kind of, of any anything related to the applications or anything that they should consider? I would just say uh, if any additional support is needed, just reach out to myself or Natalie Wilson, or uh, you could touch base with Lauren Rand as well, and uh, we will get you set on the right path. Becky, I was going to ask, are there any limitations to the software? Like, are there characters that would, um, like if you did like a slash or a dash or a ampersand or anything like that, that would um, kind of throw a wrench in the system? Anything anyone needs to be aware of? No, you shouldn't have to worry about anything like that. Nope. Yeah, if you do run into, you know, any technical issues or you hit an error or something like that, um, I'll give uh, Jerry the, so you, you can contact support down here, right? So there's like a, a link for you to email us. I'll also give him the, um, our support number, right? To include in this section here. You can call us if you have any technical questions or anything um, related on how to use the system if you need support from our side. 